Item Number SCP-1111 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures A restricted zone has been established in a 2km radius around SCP-1111-2. A public statement was released, declaring it to be a weather monitoring station. Cameras are suspended from weather balloons, constantly monitoring the enclosure. Individuals may not come within 1 km of SCP-1111-2 without explicit written permission from a Level 4 researcher or higher. Should SCP-1111-1 move away from SCP-1111-2, all personnel are to evacuate the restricted zone until SCP-1111-1 returns to its position beneath SCP-1111-2. Description SCP-1111-1 is an entity with an appearance similar to that of Canis familiaris, commonly known as the domestic dog. The size of SCP-1111-1 varies with its distance from SCP-1111-2. Directly beneath it, SCP-1111-1 is approximately 150 centimeters from ground to shoulders. The exact breed of SCP-1111-1 is unclear. It appears to be a mix, with traits of both a Labrador Retriever and a German Shepherd clearly visible. SCP-1111-1 possesses a white coat and red eyes, both of which glow at luminosities directly proportional to its proximity to SCP-1111-2. At distances greater than 500 meters from SCP-1111-2, SCP-1111-1 gradually becomes translucent. Additionally, SCP-1111-1's speed, strength, and agility all seem to be inversely proportional to its distance from SCP-1111-2. A dog tag is affixed to a faded red collar around SCP-1111-1's neck. The tag reads, Loyal. Left alone, SCP-1111-1 lies down beneath SCP-1111-2. It does not appear to sleep, or if it does, is able to do so with its eyes completely open. It does not eat, drink, or breathe. Should SCP-1111-1 become aware of any person or object coming near SCP-1111-2, it will quickly become hostile and attempt to destroy the intruder. SCP-1111-1 has significantly increased physical abilities above a standard canine. Video records show it running at speeds in excess of 60 km per hour, jumping 6 meters into the air, and biting through 15 mm titanium plating. SCP-1111-1 appears to be incorporeal, and as such, attempts to both neutralize it and examine SCP-1111-2 more closely have been met with failure. See Incident Log 1111-B for details. SCP-1111-2 has the appearance of a man hanged by a noose from a tree. The subject wears a faded business suit and dress shoes. Both are too worn to properly identify a manufacturer. SCP-1111-2 constantly jerks and twitches in a manner consistent with those of a man being hanged. Occasionally, gasps for breath can also be heard. The violence and energy of these jerks is directly proportional to SCP-1111-1's proximity to SCP-1111-2. As the distance between the two increases, the jerks and twitches decrease in violence and frequency. Incident Log 1111-B Date, May 2nd, 19... A team of... Agents were sent to attempt to neutralize SCP-1111-1 for transportation to a containment facility. The team approached SCP-1111-2 from the north, opposite the direction SCP-1111-1 was facing. The agents were able to come within 300 meters of SCP-1111-2, at which point SCP-1111-1 rose and attacked the agents without warning. Agent Realizing that the mission had failed, began to flee the area. SCP-1111-1 pursued, but decreased in size, definition, and speed as it grew further and further away from SCP-1111-2. When SCP-1111-1 reached a distance of 900 meters from SCP-1111-2, SCP-1111-2 was observed to stop moving entirely. At this point, SCP-1111-1 froze for a moment, and turned its head towards SCP-1111-2. SCP-1111-1 stayed in this position for a few seconds before howling once and sprinting back towards SCP-1111-2. 
SCP-1111-2 was observed to resume its jerking and twitching. Video records of the incident indicate that rounds fired at SCP-1111-1 passed through it without making contact, despite the fact that its teeth and claws proved solid when attacking agents. Agent was the only one to survive the incident. 5 from this point forward, only D-Class and remote-operated drones may be used to approach SCP-1111 directly. Date: May 20th, 19... D-Class, armed with... were sent to approach SCP-1111-2 from various directions. Incident proved similar to previous attempt. SCP-1111-1 proceeded to kill all D-Class present. During the incident, D-83011 was able to come within 50 meters of SCP-1111-2 before being killed. During this time, cameras noted an anomaly with SCP-1111-2. Its jerks slowed, and its eyes opened and fixed on D-83011. SCP-1111-2's arms then raised towards D-83011 in what appeared to observers as a welcoming embrace. Moments before D-83011 was killed by SCP-1111-1, SCP-1111-2's lips can be seen moving, mouthing what appear to be the words, No, Down Boy. Immediately after the death of D-83011, SCP-1111-2 fell limp and resumed normal twitching. 5 it appears as though simply isolating SCP-1111-2 is enough to effectively contain SCP-1111-1. As such, all further testing is suspended, barring a significant development until further notice. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to my level 4 patron, Alexis Zagrate. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.